Welcome back to Disturbed Reality. Ever since the turn of the century, due to the growth of the internet and social media, the average person is far more aware of the atrocities going on around the globe. Raw footage taken in real time from conflicts across the world are shared online and sometimes generate hundreds of thousands of views, even if the footage is somewhat graphic. The morality of such content is always in question, but I think it's safe to say that we're exposed to more extreme content even if we're not necessarily searching it out. Here in the West, I would say the turning point for the normalization of such content would have been the Iraq War, which started in March of 2003 and ended in December of 2011. The war produced much graphic content that surfaced online. In fact, here in the UK, mainstream news channels such as BBC News and Sky News faced investigations in regards to snippets of the Saddam Hussein execution that were shown on live TV. Both BBC and Sky were cleared of any wrongdoing due to reporting appropriate information for news channels as required by the Broadcasting Code, and so viewers would have been aware to a great extent of the nature of the subsequent reports. The media watchdog said that the unique nature of the events justified the use of the pictures and footage. From my own perspective, the most poignant memory that I have from the Iraq war coverage, living through it as a young child, were the men in the orange jumpsuits. Captured prisoners of war, usually private contractors or journalists, held hostage by insurgent groups as pawns to make various demands, only for them to be eventually executed. The name Kenneth Bigley is forever etched in my mind, the imagery of his captured state and pleas for help remain in my memory. Kenneth Bigley, born on the 22nd of April 1942, was a British civil engineer working for Gulf Supplies and Commercial Services, a Kuwaiti company working on reconstruction projects in Iraq. On the 16th of September 2004, along with his colleagues Jack Hensley and Eugene Armstrong, both of whom were US citizens, were captured by an insurgent group by the name of Taweed and Jihad under the command of Abu Masab al zakawi Abu was a Jordanian jihadist who ran a terrorist training camp in Afghanistan. He became known after going to Iraq and being responsible for a series of bombings, beheadings and attacks during the Iraq war, reportedly turning an insurgency against US troops in Iraq and contributing to the Shia-Sunni civil war. He was sometimes known by his supporters as the Sheikh of the Slaughterers. Zarqawi took responsibility on several audio and video recordings for numerous acts of violence in Iraq, including suicide bombings and hostage executions. He opposed the presence of US and Western military forces in the Islamic world, as well as the Western world's support for the existence of Israel. In late 2004, he joined Al-Qaeda and pledged his allegiance to Osama bin Laden. As well as targeting Western military personnel, he also declared an all-out war on Shiites in Iraq. Shia Islam, or Shiism, is the second largest branch of Islam, with Abu being a Sunni Muslim. On the 7th of June 2006, Zarqawi was killed attending a meeting in an isolated safe house Around five miles north of Bakuba, two US Air Force F-16 fighter jets identified the house and the lead jet dropped two 500-pound guided bombs onto the safe house, killing Zarqawi as well as five others. But nevertheless, as mentioned, Kenneth Bigley was captured on the 16th of September 2004 along with his colleagues. Days before their capture, the men knew that their home was being watched and realised that they were in great danger when their Iraqi house guard informed them that he was leaving due to threats made by militias for protecting American and British workers. Kenneth Bigley and his two American colleagues, despite the risk, decided to stay in the house, and after a few days, the men were kidnapped. On the 18th of September 2004, the fate of the three men 
was revealed to the world. The extremist group, Taweed and Jihad, released a video of the three men kneeling in front of the Taweed and Jihad banner. The kidnappers said that they would kill the men within 48 hours if their demands for the release of Iraqi women prisoners held by coalition forces were not met. Eugene Armstrong was killed on the 20th of September 2004, and Jack Hensley was killed 24 hours later. Though Kenneth Bigley was not killed immediately, he was let to live for a further two weeks, despite an attempted intervention from the Muslim Council of Britain. Before Kenneth's execution, the group released a couple of videos depicting Ken Bigley begging for his life and asking for help from then British Prime Minister Tony Blair. In one video, while wearing an orange jumpsuit and locked inside a wire cage, Kenneth Bigley said, I need you to help me now Blair, because you are the only person on God's earth who can help me. By this time, rumours circulated that the British government at the time were trying to negotiate the release of Kenneth. However, another video was released with Kenneth Bigley stating the following, Tony Blair is lying. He doesn't care about me. I'm just one person. Kenneth Bigley was eventually executed on the 7th of October 2004, around two weeks after the execution of his American colleagues. A couple of months after the men's executions, the chicken wire cage in which Bigley was filmed was found in November 2004 by US troops in a house in Fallujah. The US military stated that it found paraphernalia associated with hostage holding and torture, including shackles, blood-stained walls, and a torture chamber. The executions of Kenneth Bigley, Eugene Armstrong, and Jack Hensley were filmed and were subsequently uploaded to extremist websites and shock sites. The first videos to be released were the executions of Eugene Armstrong and Jack Hensley, it goes without saying that all three videos are extremely graphic and distressing, with many claiming that the beheading of Eugene is the worst of its kind online, and having viewed the video, I can understand why people came to that conclusion. But nevertheless, what happens in the actual videos? The Eugene Armstrong video is around one minute long, and it opens with Eugene's captors reading out a brief statement in Arabic, Eugene can be seen kneeling on the ground under a Taweed and Jihad flag and is surrounded by five heavily armed insurgents. It's clear that Eugene knows that he's about to meet his untimely and cruel demise. He can be seen rocking back and forth, side to side, as he anticipates what he's about to be subjected to. At around 10 seconds into the video, Eugene is pulled to the ground by the men, one of the men pulls his hair back to expose his neck, while the other takes out a knife and starts slicing Eugene's throat. The screams of pain are horrifying as blood pools on the ground. As the terrorist cuts deeper into Eugene's neck, the tone of the scream changes into a higher pitch. Eventually, the screams turn into an animalistic high-pitched wheezing sound. The best way I can describe it, without meaning to disrespect the victim, is the sound of a pig in a slaughterhouse. In terms of sounds, I can see why people view this as the worst beheading video online. Eventually, Eugene is beheaded, with his body laying in a huge pool of blood. The executioner then holds Eugene's head up to the camera and then places it on his body. The video then ends. Jack Hensley was executed the day after Eugene, and once again, the process was filmed on camera for the world to see. The video is around a minute long, and much like Eugene, Jack can be seen kneeling on the ground under a Taweed and Jihad flag, surrounded by five insurgents. This is the same location shown in the Eugene Armstrong video. A brief statement is read out on camera, and after a few seconds, Jack is pushed to the ground and one of the insurgents takes out a knife and starts slicing at Jack's throat. Jack lets out a brief scream as his neck is being sliced. The knife is a lot larger than in the first video and seems to be much sharper. The terrorist grabs Jack's head 
by putting his fingers in Jack's eye sockets to pull his head back and make the beheading easier. After Jack is beheaded, his severed head is held up to the camera as blood drips to the ground. Jack's mouth appears to be still moving as his head is held up. His head is then placed on his body, which is where the second video ends. The final video to be released was the execution of Kenneth Bigley. The video itself is just over 3 minutes long, though noticeably, the video differs from the previous two. The setting is different. In the first two videos, the executions appear to be carried out in the same white room by the same five men. However, the location in the Kenneth Bigley video is different. The backdrop is a brick wall rather than the white room. Kenneth can be seen kneeling before his captors under the Taweed and Jihad flag, though this time there are six insurgents instead of five. Even the style in which the video is filmed is different. They have Kenneth read out a statement, and the camera cuts to different angles, switching from close-ups of Kenneth to showing Kenneth kneeling in front of the insurgents. Kenneth reads out the following statement. Here I am again, Mr. Blair, and your government, very, very close to the end of my life. You don't appear to have done anything at all to help me. I'm not a difficult person. I'm a simple man who just wants to live a simple life with his family. These people, their patience is wearing very, very thin, and they're very serious people. Please, please give them what they require, the freedom of the women in our prison. I beg you, if you do this, the problem is solved. The British people, more than ever I need your help, more than ever I need your voices to go out into the street and to demand a better life for the women that are in our prisons in Baghdad. I can't say a great deal more. I've said so many things to you at so many different times that all I can tell you now is that I have a very short time left. After Kenneth reads out his statement, one of the terrorists reads one of his own. The video then cuts forwards to the execution. Once again, it is different to the previous two. Kenneth is pushed to the ground as the men surround him, obscuring the view of the camera as they chant Allo Akbar. Unlike the first two videos, Kenneth's execution isn't actually shown on camera. The video cuts forwards, showing Kenneth's bloody head being held high to the camera as the men maniacally chant. The video cuts forwards once again, this time showing Kenneth's bloody head placed on his body. This is where the video ends. For whatever reason, the style of filming, location, what was shown on camera, and even the behaviour of the executioners is drastically different from the first two videos. The reasoning behind this? We can only speculate. Naturally, many conspiracy theories surround the murder of Kenneth in particular, including theories that he worked for US intelligence and that his role as a private contractor was a mere cover story. But regardless, all of these years later, the videos are still very hard to look at. In regards to my own personal experience, I remember the case of Kenneth Bigley well, despite only being 10 years old at the time. It was a huge news story here in the UK, and it was plastered all over mainstream media. As a dumb naive 10 year old, the Iraq war coverage was pretty terrifying, wondering whether we would get invaded and things of that nature. But as I got older, I soon realised that the occupation of Iraq was based on an utter lie. Hundreds of thousands of people killed for what? How certain authority figures aren't in prison is honestly beyond me. Quite frankly, these people are psychotic and they belong in a cage. Just take a look at this clip. destruction got to be somewhere <laughs> I am saying dick if the Hunan Palace didn't get lunch in four minutes 
We're going out. <laughs> nope, no weapons over there. Nothing short of disgusting. Ultimately, left or right, these people are more than happy to send your kids to die in a foreign conflict while also killing an untold amount of civilians in the process just to keep the military industrial complex going. And again, how people are not in prison over this conflict is beyond me. But I need to stop here because I'm just going to get fucking angry, quite frankly. But, um, yeah. I hope you enjoyed the video, if you can enjoy this sort of content. As always, thank you guys for the support, it is much appreciated. If you have any video topics in mind, please feel free to share them in the comments below. And as always, stay safe, and I'll catch you on the next one.